Good morning, or afternoon, depending on when you are viewing this video blog post. Um, this week we're talking about uh, core values and uh, the case of a young girl who uh, went through a procedure and ended up on life support, uh, the story of young Jahi McMath. Um, I've got my cheat sheet next to me and the article that I read pulled up so uh, my eyes jot around I apologize um, the article that I read related to this week's material is called unlocking the benefits of diversity and all-inclusive multiculturalism and positive organizational change by Flannery G Stevens Victoria Plout and Jeffrey Sanchez Burks uh, this article was published in the Journal of Applied Behavioral Science, Volume 44, Number 1, in March of 2008, uh, pages 116 through 133. And I'll be referencing this article a couple times throughout this post um, as it relates to uh, diversity and building a diverse work environment. <clears throat> when I took the core values uh, questionnaire, um, the core values that uh, I ended up with were integrity and wisdom. And integrity to me is always doing the right thing regardless of whether people are watching or can see what you're doing. And then wisdom is not acting rashly getting all of the information on a topic before you speak too definitively about it. Um, I think these two values are important for whatever aspect of daily life uh, you may be talking about. I think it's important to um, always act with integrity <coughs> and always uh, with wisdom. Um, in the case of uh, Ms. McMath, there's a lot of a lot of information that we are presented with. Um, there's also a lot of information that we are missing. Um, we kind of get a relatively detailed idea of the family's values and uh, the, fa the family's point of view in terms of what to do moving forward, and we also get the perspective of the hospital, uh, the physicians involved in this little girl's care, and uh, arguments of the patient being brain dead and uh, requiring life support to have for her heart to continue beating. Um, there's a, a great deal of information that we're, we're not given in terms of the hospital stay itself. For example, we don't know if there was uh, any kind of negligence on the part of the hospital uh, in terms of, uh, you know, was there lab work that they weren't paying attention to? Was there um, certain symptoms of bleeding, minor bleeding that might have been present um, that should have been caught early on? Was there any mistake by the nursing staff? Um, we don't know if this family was a Jehovah's Witness and therefore refusing blood products. Um, if that were the case, that would certainly be an important information in terms of uh, the outcome of the patient. So uh, these are just a few examples, and you know, the list goes on and on, of just information that we're not really given. So in terms of speaking definitively about uh, what should be done, um, it's really impossible for, for me to say. Obviously, uh, the hospital has its set of protocols that it goes through and tests that it run and they've come to their conclusion and the family has its own set of values that it's holding to that informs their decision and uh, there's equal value to both sides uh, simply coming from different perspectives. Um, in a uh, relationship with the nurse executive competencies that might be challenged when personal values are put above anything else. 
Um, I narrowed it down to communication and professionalism. Um, and the two things are really related. I think that these two things can be compromised because uh, people are going to obviously communicate differently when they feel certain similarities towards other people based on values. Um, I know that uh, it's, it's something that I face all the time at work. I might meet someone who um, in communication or in talking we uh, discover that we have very similar values politically, religiously, um, ethically, and uh, it's very easy for us to gravitate towards each other. Um, because of that, it can create uh, barriers between other coworkers. There might be a feeling of favoritism. Um, if you're a nurse manager and you feel like you have similarities between other coworkers, you might gravitate towards that uh, employee. Um, and uh, you know, attitudes of favoritism can arise, which is uh, problematic for professionalism. Uh, in terms of ANA standards, um, I narrowed it down to uh, collaboration and performance appraisal. And I think this goes back to the idea of communication again. If uh, your personal values are preeminent, then again, you'll gravitate towards people who hold the same values and it can impact the uh, appraisal performance. You can base an employee's performance um, based on how similar they display the values that you hold to in the workplace. And it can cause, um, it can cause a standard for <clears throat> behavior that isn't based on, uh, you know, the actual work that they perform, but has more to do with does this person believe the same things that I do? Or do they believe similar things? Or do they believe different things than what I do? Um, in this sense, uh, in terms of the uh, professional standards, um, it really ties back to the article that I read. Uh, the article by uh, Stevens, Plout, and Burks talks about uh, two aspects of um, creating a diverse workforce that, uh, or not two aspects, but, but two um, strategies that fail when building a diverse workforce, and that is uh, colorblindness and multiculturalism. Uh, colorblindness is kind of an obvious one because uh, colorblindness is the idea of uh, treating everyone the same. But when you try to bring that attitude to the workplace, what you really tend to do is treat everyone the same in relationship to your own culture. And you don't really embrace the ideas or beliefs or uh, embrace the diversity of other groups and don't really uh, appreciate what other ethnic groups or people of different backgrounds have to bring to the table. It's more you take your own personal beliefs and treat everyone the same based on uh, those personal traits. And so it's really no better. Uh, it doesn't really create a spirit or uh, an environment of inclusion. And then uh, multiculturalism. Um, it's not one that would obviously be thought of um, as a negative, <clears throat> but in... Uh, in studies, and uh, this is again right from um, the article by uh, Stevens Plout and Burks, um, there's a, a specific quote on page 121 that says multiculturalism arises as a reaction against Anglo or Eurocentrism, but at what point does it pass over into an ethnocentrism of its own? And what they uh, flesh out in the article and what they're kind of getting at is the idea that rather than 
a spirit of all inclusion. There's a focus on uh, non-Western, non-white cultures. And so the Western white culture um, often feels ignored and feel that, like they're not being appreciated and that uh, things swing to this multiculturalism, which in reality is a uh, focus or an uplifting of all cultures that are non-white and non-Western and focus only on those things. And what you tend to do there is eliminate the majority culture, whatever, you know, in this instance, the uh, white Western culture. And it's uh, ignoring those aspects. And it's also creating a division because uh, rather than focus on what makes you similar and uh, different things that could bring us together, it's again creating a defined separation and focusing only on the, the minority groups. Um, relating this back to the, uh, the topic of um, Little Jahi um, and uh, the core value of wisdom, I think that it's important for us to, again, get all information possible, try to gain knowledge on where Jahi's family is coming from, try to include them in the decision-making process, and not say, well, that's what you believe, but we have our own set of criteria, and this is how we're going to define what needs to be done. Um, I'm not saying that's an easy thing to do but it's at least a starting point, a place where we can say, all right, we'll take all of these things that uh, appear to be contradictory. Let's try and find a way that we can speak to your needs based on uh, your beliefs and your thought processes. And uh, let's also try and uh, make our point, the hospital's point, um, one of giving you all the information that you need to make a decision from a medical standpoint. Um, again, it's a very difficult case to flesh out. Um, I think the, the most important thing goes back, and I'm really bringing sort of my core values into every aspect of it, is, um, you know, doing the right thing is... Uh, it's difficult in this situation because there's really no clear-cut right thing. The hospital believes they're doing the right thing uh, by going through all of their tests and making their determination. The family believes that they're doing the right thing by um, taking their beliefs and uh, the things that they hold uh, in most importance and making their decision based on that. Um, as long as both groups are transparent in terms of bringing all the information that they can to the situation, there's really nothing else that can be done. I think that in any workplace situation, um, building a, a spirit of uh, inclusion, bringing diversity to the workplace, um, has to involve uh, open dialogue. Uh, it also has to really focus on communicating differences and how you can hold on to your personal beliefs while at the same time understanding where the other people are coming from and uh, try to come as close to a middle ground as possible. Obviously, personal values come into play with everything that we do. It's what makes us who we are. We can't ignore them. and because you know our values make us who we are, it's uh, it's impossible for us to be colorblind, like the article says, because we're not going to be able to treat everyone the same um, without bringing our own values into things, and we're not going to be able to um, encourage this idea of multiculturalism perfectly the way that we want to, because we're always going to uh, be ignoring. Our own culture in an, in an attempt to uplift everyone else and uh, 
give the impression of being all inclusive, but in reality, uh, multiculturalism makes us um, ignore the uh, majority. Um, I think I've covered about everything that I wanted to in the blog post. Um, again, it's a very difficult situation with uh, little Jahi, and uh, you know, it's one that uh, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to deal with it right now. I've certainly seen it in my work environment, though, working in the ICU, dealing with uh, taking people off of life support. It's uh, a difficult thing to see. Um, I feel like uh, as a nurse, it's most important for me to uh, just give patient families all the information they can possibly get so that they're making an informed decision that is based on knowing everything that I know uh, and everything that the physician knows, and then they can take that information and make the best decision possible. Um, but I, uh, I do encourage everyone to go out and read the article that I read. Um, again, it's called, uh, Unlocking the Benefits of Diversity, All-Inclusive Multiculturalism and Positive Organizational Change uh, by Flannery Stevens, Victoria Plout, and Jeffrey Sanchez Burks. And again, you can find it in the Journal of Applied and Behavioral Science, Volume 44, Number 1, pages 116 to 133, published March 8th. Um... It's a good article. Uh, it really kind of points out where uh, we tend to go wrong when we're trying to build a diverse workplace and uh, what needs to be done in terms of taking steps to be more diverse in our thinking and in creating a, a good working environment for everyone involved. So, thank you and uh, good luck to everyone.